slave trade started in two centuries after Christ. But the demand of slave became higher uh, on the year 1776 to the second industrial revolution that's 1850s, whereby most of the, of the European countries they established uh, plantations, industries and factories. So they had to find elsewhere people who will work under those factories, farms uh, and industries. So there, for the first time they started by the, the white themselves, then to the uh, Red Indians, then later on they came to the Africans, that's black. And that's why, why black? The whites, they was, uh, they were suffering from different diseases, which was uh, smallpox, babonic plague, malaria, and flu. That was among the big effects. So for them, it was hard when on the time of, uh, they need crop, crops, or raw material that would be used in their uh, industries. So from there, they had to find elsewhere. That's why they came to Africa and find people who are energy enough and they can work under such conditions. So whether a black has a, a malaria, has a flu, has a, any kinds of illness, still he can work or she can work. So the time that they came in, uh, in East Africa, now in Tanzania, Slaves, they are collected in three major places. In the worst part of Tanzania, that's Congo. By then it was called Zaire. They were taken to Kigoma, the worst part of Tanzania, near Lake Tanganyika. Then they were taken to Bagamoyo. So the other route was in the northern part. That's from Kenya, Uganda. They were taken and sent them to Pangani in Tanga region. Northeast of Tanzania. But we had the slaves from the southern part of Tanzania. They were collected out there from Mozambique, Angola, Zambia. Mozambique, by then, was called Southern Rhodesia, Northern Rhodesia before being common. So, slaves they were collected along there and sent them to Kiwa. So, all those three points the Zanzibar, Kiwa, and Pangani at the points where by slaves they were taken to Zanzibar as the center of slave sort of market in East Africa. That's marked as slaves that have been bought along there and they are divided into three. Adults, kids, and the pregnant women. So for instance, for the women, they were mistreated in a way that they had to take off their upper shirt, they'd be checking out their teeth, their dental signs, and different things. They were humiliated a lot. Uh, but after that, kids, the baby believed that they will work for long years to come. Likewise, the pregnant women, they bear a child, a mother be a slave, and a kid be a slave as well. Then fall by the adults. But slaves, for those who are uh, used as the slaves, they were collected uh, in different ways. Some, they were being collected at the prisoners, Prisoners, they were being taken away, but also some they were collected uh, through uh, by using the gun and different uh, ways. Uh, but in Zanzibar, approximately about a hundred thousand slaves, they were take, they were being transported to different part of the world as the slave. So as the museum, we have created something uh, like a tray that shows how slaves they were treated. This is the real ivory of an elephant. Mm -hmm. And this has about 83 kilograms. And this, as we speak, is in 18th century. So right now, we'll never find a big elephant has a past in this area. So this shows, so for instance, we had a record that slaves from the west, the central route, that's from the west part of Tanzania, they were spending about six to eight months on that way walking from the west part of Tanzania all the way to the coast. You can just imagine walking for about six to eight months. So some people, they were killed on the way walking, 
on their way to Bagamoyo and if you just show it that you are too harsh to them, they just kill you on the spot. They had no time to work, they had no time to discuss. That's how our grand and grandfathers, they were treated. But slave came to an end due to different treats that were signs. We have most by treats, prelate treats, Hamilton treats. In 1842, the three sun treats uh, were signed. But in uh, East Africa, specifically in Tanzania, slave came to end completely in 1922. That was the end of slavery. Yes, though slaves still there. Mm -hmm. Slaves still there. Though uh, it's on the other way around, mm -hmm. not as how it was in direct. That's how things are. Yeah. So after slave and after the slave that was done by the Arabs, then we have the Germany. So Germany, they were the first country to colonize Tanganyika. So during Germany domination, we were. It was soon after the Berlin Conference of so 1814 and 5. Two years after. Germany dominated Tanganyika fully, and that was in 1887. So from 1887, we were under Germany, up to 1960s. 1960s? Oh, yes. yes, 1960s. Mm -hmm. And uh, during Germany now, soon after their arrival, they followed how the Arabs were doing. They should slay, they need the raw materials, they introduce different crop, uh, crops that they were in need, that they were not being produced in Tanzania, which was sisal plantations, but also we had the cotton in the coast, I mean, uh, in the southern part of Tanzania. But also uh, for the sisal plantation, we had them in Morogoro, but also in Tanga, in northeast of Tanzania. Uh, all of those are some of the crops that they were not being produced in Tanzania. They were introduced by the Germans. But soon after the arrival of the Germans, they introduced different things, different cultures. Uh, we had the resistance against them. Along the coast, we had the Mushiri Bonahe, that was in the year 1888, one year after. But also we had the other, in 19th century, we had several resistance. Thus, we were fighting against Germans. We had in, the, in Tabora, the worst part of Tanzania. In Kilimanjaro, we had also the resistance. In the southern part of Tanzania, we had also resistance. That was the famous Chief Mkwawa, who killed a number of German soldiers. But also, the last resistance was in 20th century, which was in 1905-1907. That's Maji Maji Rebellion. That was the last. Then we were fighting against Germany to, uh, to be out from colonialism. And the reason was uh, due because of the, uh, the cotton plantations. So there is a big story about South Liberia. But apart from that, uh, during Germany, we had different things. We had the first railway stations that was built in here, but also we have the first hospital that was built in by the Germans. We have some of the church that's uh, Catholic and Ruthers who built by the Germans. We have the, uh, the, Freema the Ma Freemason Hall, different things. The, uh, the State House. So German has uh, not only on the other side negative uh, impact, but they have the positive impact on the other side. So you can't be uh, good in all sectors. <laughs> there, is, you, there is other places that you'll be missing somewhere. Yeah. That, that's all. Then after the First World War, we were under, we, German, they were defeated. And from there, we were returned to be under British. Yeah. So these yeah. are some of the other things from Germany. All of which patrolled the ocean road, which was built by the Germans, which was up to the rest of the state. And this is how people are working. Uh, what is this building? Ocean Road Hospital. Oh. We have seen it there. Now it's the Hospital of Cancer, Institute of Cancer. So that's, uh, that's and these are uh, making the rail, making uh, railway construction. Rail construction. 
That's the same for railway. And did the city of Dar es Salaam by 1911 having uh, Germany names all streets of Dar es Salaam by 1911? Yeah. If you are good, you're reading Germany names. <laughs> So that's, uh, for instance, the hospital that was built in the year 1895. Then the African hospital was built in 1897. That's now it's the National Hospital. Just found me alive at the dark. I saw the yeah, here now is British. National Museum of Tanzania. This British. British is showing that we had the first building as a museum. So these are pictures of the First World War that Germany was defeated. And though we wonder, what is interesting is, by that time, during the First World War, we won the Germany. But we were fighting the side of British. There you go, family. Then after... After, after all, I've them, they are scanning Yes. I said that I am yes. born of the... Princess Margaret, but they are under the German. Yeah. We still own it by the way. Yeah, but it's it. Continue. And for the circle, I can add on top of the circle of the Ascari monument, the first statue was for Hermann von Wiesmann mm. as the German governor after succeeding the first resistance in the coast. That was in the year 1888. So the first statue was in the year 1898. So after succeeding a such a resistance, German war, so the German government, they asked Hermann von Wiesmann to find what is the center of the city. And within the Ascari monument, he pointed that. And from there, they built a statue that shows that appreciation. And from there, Hermann von Wiesmann was announced as the governor of East African countries. That was Tanganyika, Burundi, and Rwanda. So, Dutch Ost Africa, all of those three countries. So, the name Tanganyika started to be used in 1920s by the British. And this is the first building as the museum. That was built from 1938 to 1939. And on 7th of December in 1940, is where this museum was opened and named as King George the Fifth Memorial Museum who was passed away in 1936. So the exhibition that was the phone inside, we were only have two exhibitions. That's ethnography and biology. And here is Howard McMichael, who was the first curator and the first uh, uh, museum director. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 